We've seen how weak acids and bases create equilibrium with water, and how salts can hide conjugate acids and bases, which will subsequently form equilibrium. Now, we need to consider what would happen when we combine a weak acid or base with a strong acid or base. We know that the strong acid mixed with strong bases produce water in a salt. When we mix sodium hydroxide with hydrochloric acid, we get sodium chloride and water. However, what happens if we mix sodium hydroxide with acetic acid? We know that the sodium will be a spectator ion, and that the hydroxide ion and the proton from acetic acid will form water. We can write a molecular equation for this reaction. And we can write a net ionic equation for the reaction as well. The only thing we removed from the net ionic equation is the spectator ion, sodium. What is left is water and the conjugate weak base, acetate. Also, we can look at what happens when a weak base, ammonia, reacts with hydrochloric acid. Again, we can write a molecular equation and then a net ionic equation. The only spectator ion this time is chloride. What is left is the ammonium ion, which is the conjugate weak acid of ammonia. Read and work through page 119 in your workbook. Now, we can look at what concentration of products are left after the reaction occurs. Imagine we have 20 milliliters of 0.2 molar acetic acid, and we react it with 50 milliliters of 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. Let's write the net ionic equation. We can ignore the sodium ion again because it is a spectator. We can then calculate the initial concentrations of everything else. For acetic acid, we have 0.004 moles, and the hydroxide ion, we have 0.005 moles. Thus, the acetic acid is the limiting reagent and will only neutralize 0.004 moles of hydroxide ion, leaving us with 0.001 moles of hydroxide and 0.004 moles of acetate. Now, we can ask what the pH of the resulting solution at equilibrium is. The acetate is a weak base and will not have a significant effect on the pH in the presence of the hydroxide ion. So, we can use the total volume from the original mixture, which is a 20 mils plus 50 mils, divide the moles of the hydroxide ion by this amount to get the molarity, which is 0.014 molar. Then, calculate the pOH and use that to calculate the pH, which is 12.15. This was pretty easy because the strong base was not the limiting reagent. However, let's look at a problem where the strong base is the limiting reagent. Let's say we have 50 milliliters of 0.5 molar nitrous acid, and we react that with 30 mils of 0.2 molar calcium hydroxide. First, let's write out a molecular equation and balance it. Now, we can write out the net ionic equation, emitting calcium because it's a spectator ion. Nitrate is the conjugate weak base of nitrous acid. Now, let's do the limiting reagent problem and find out which one will be in excess. The initial amounts of reactants are 0.025 moles of nitrous acid and 0.012 moles of hydroxide ion. Our molar ratio is 1 to 1. Thus, we are limited by the moles of strong base, which means that we will neutralize all of it and be left with 0.013 moles of nitrous acid. We also generate 0.012 moles of the conjugate base nitrate. Since we have an equilibrium now between the conjugate base and the weak acid, we need to set up an ice table to calculate the final concentrations of the pH of this solution. Our total volume is 50 mils plus 30 mils. We then divide the 80 mils by the moles of each to get our initial concentration. So, 0.16 molar nitrous acid and 0.15 moles nitrate. We plug these values into our ice table and solve for x. using the Ka for nitrous acid. We get x is equal to the proton concentration and equals 4.8 times 10 to the minus fourth molar. Thus, the pH is 3.32. These problems take a lot of steps, but they are not difficult if you follow a three-step process. One, determine the net ionic equation for the reaction. Two, Determine the limiting reagent and whether the strong or weak acid base is limiting. Three, determine the pH using either the strong acid base concentration or by using an ice table if the strong acid base is limiting.
read and work through pages 120 through 122 in your workbook. Buffers. Companies like to use marketing to sell their products, often without much to back up their outrageous claims. Recently, I discovered a company that wants to sell you a bottle of water with a pH of 9. They claim that the high pH of the water will help remove acid from your blood and therefore make you less unhealthy. There's only one liter of water in this bottle. It would take a lot more pH 9 water to change the pH of your blood. What they fail to mention is that your blood pH is controlled by buffers, specifically carbonic acid, which is the carbonate ion bound to two protons. What exactly is a buffer? In the last problem, we had a limiting amount of strong base and ended up with an initial concentration of strong acid and its conjugate weak base. These kinds of solutions are called buffers. That is because they are excellent at resisting changes to pH with the addition of acids or bases. We could add additional strong acid or base to our nitrous acid buffer system and redo the above calculations to see how it would affect the final pH. But there's a shortcut to doing these kinds of calculations for buffers. Let's take a look at a generic equation for a weak acid. We have HA goes to the proton and A minus, the conjugate base. We can write an equation for the Ka of this reaction like we've done before. Then we can multiply both sides by the inverse of the base over the acid to get this. We then take the negative log of both sides and separate out the negative log of Ka using the rules of logarithm. We know that the negative log of the proton concentration is the pH, but we can also say that the negative log of Ka is a pKa, according to our prior rule. We can then use more properties of logarithms to flip the log fraction and switch the sign. This gives us what is called the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. It allows us to calculate the pH of a weak acid or weak base solution quickly, as long as we have both the conjugate acid base along with its corresponding weak acid or base. Let's try one. What is the pH of a buffer solution prepared by dissolving 21.46 grams of benzoic acid and 27.68 grams of sodium benzoate in 200 milliliters of solution? The Ka for benzoic acid is 6.3 times 10 to the minus 5. We can use the molecular mass of benzoic acid and sodium benzoate to calculate the moles added. We can use 200 milliliters to calculate the molarity of each species. Because benzoate is a conjugate base of benzoic acid, we can use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. The pKa is just the negative log of the Ka. So, we can set up the equation with what we have. Put these into the equation and we get a pH of 4.24. Not bad. Read through pages 123 through 129 in your workbook. Some weak acids have two or sometimes three protons that they can donate. These are called polyprotic acids. Take this generic diprotic acid equation. We can think about this in two steps, with one proton removed at each step. This would give us a second equation like this. The Ka for the first step would be defined as this, and the Ka for the second step would be defined as this. Read and work through pages 130 through 131 in your workbook. We now have all the tools we need to look at some titrations in the lab. We will do several titrations over the next couple labs, so be prepared for them. Pages 132 through 138 in your workbook have good information and practice for titration. Next, we will be looking at solubility, and instead of just memorizing a table, we will be considering how equilibriums actually govern solubility. <laughs>